glad in it. So, amen. So good to have everybody here today in the house of the Lord. We appreciate, amen, uh, everybody coming. And it's an exciting day for uh, all of us here at Antioch. And we're just thank the Lord that uh, uh, Brother Jacob's going to come here in a little while and bring his first message. And uh, just a day to write down in the back of our Bibles that uh, we was all here and heard the man of God. Uh, take out his leap of faith and take his, his calling unto the Lord. And I see a lot of other folks coming in the uh, parking lot, and I'm so thankful for all of you that's come today to support him and let him know. And uh, God's preachers, uh, you know, they can preach without support, uh, but it sure does make it a whole lot better to have it. Amen. It sure does. You know, an old dog, an old dog out in the field that's a hunting, you start a hollering at him. Seek him, boy, seek him. Uh, even an old dog will take notice of that. Right. And uh, you get to, when a man's up preaching the gospel of Jesus and God's people are praying and God's people are behind him, amen, he knows that. And I believe that everybody here, I don't think Jacob has a doubt uh, that everybody here at the church has been praying for him this week. And we're just excited, amen. We're just excited and looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Let's all stand by the Lord in the service. Amen. May the Spirit of God just fall out of heaven today. Amen. May the Lord just have His will and way. Father, we love You. We thank You, God, this again, God, to come before You this morning. God, we honor You today with all of our heart. And God, we, this is just a great day to be here at Antioch. And, and God, to celebrate the joys of the Lord. And, and God, the benefits of being a Christian and living for You. And walking in your ways, God, we pray today in the name of Jesus, uh, God, that you would move in the service, Lord. May the Spirit of God uh, just fall out of heaven today upon your children. God, may we all be willing and obedient, God, to walk in your ways. And, Lord, to live for you and serve you in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you now, Lord, for what you do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All can and will. Uh, let's come this morning. Let's sing. And, of course, we're getting ready. Uh, after our morning service, amen, we're going to go down to the river and have a baptize, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, so praise the Lord for all that. All right, don't get lazy this morning. Amen. Let's fill the choir up, and uh, let's come and sing unto the Lord. Let's give God everything that we got this morning.
just like that. Amen. Bless his name. 235. Bless his good name.
I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. I was blind, but now I can see. Hallelujah. I once was blind. Hallelujah, Brother Jason. Hallelujah. I, 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 I was blind. The, 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 the world had, had me blind. But, 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 Brother Jason, now I can see, hallelujah. I can see clearly tonight, hallelujah. I can see my way tonight. Yeah, bless you, Paul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the new day. Hallelujah. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we've been down a thousand years, hallelujah, it's only only begun. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise Praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah, I thank God for the grace. Thank God for the mercy, mercy that he's had on all of us. Uh, I'm glad we can be in the house of the Lord today, and back in, you know, back in church. I've, uh, I've been too busy, seems like. Uh, I'm busy with things that don't matter. I mean, they matter, but it's good to be busy, but... Things I've been busy with is, I mean, I think I've been sin and all that. I pray and hope not to sin. Right. But, uh, I've been seem like too busy to get in, get in the Word and read the Bible. It bothers you, don't it? Yeah, it bothers me. It me too, then it makes me so I can't hear. God bless makes you. me be further away from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I need to get back to the word, this uh, thing of us being our church, you know, it's kind of bothered me. It makes me, uh, I guess that's why I get busy. I've I've been doing a lot of work, but I try to get, I guess, busy to get my mind off other things. If I get in the Bible, it helped me a lot. uh, Y'all pray for me. Read the verse here. I don't guess we'll take any prayer requests today. Uh, so let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I thank the Lord for the word. I ain't been reading a whole lot. Tried reading Daniel a little bit last night, chapter 8. I thought it made a lot out of that. I don't understand. You have to understand Revelation to be able to understand that. Amen. But anyway, I thank the Lord for what he's uh, done for me. Yes. Let's all come pray. Amen. Let's pray for Jacob today, Lord. Yes. Everybody remember. And above all, let's pray for the lost. If they sit in here today, I'm sorry. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, Lord, we humble ourselves down. We thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings, Lord. Thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost and the amazing grace, God, that you've given, Lord. We love you today with everything that's in us. And God, we pray today, Lord, in this name, Lord, that you forgive us of our sins. God, bless you, Lord, for the blessings of the Lord. She's all in right. God, that we might be able to walk in the ways of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, 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 Lord,
Amen. God bless all you mamas and daddies for getting out of bed and bringing your children to the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless all of these young folks. Amen. Now, ain't that a wonderful sight this morning? That's a wonderful, blessed sight. Good to have everybody here in the house of the Lord. I appreciate Brother Clyde's honesty, don't you? They ain't no... Uh, they ain't nothing in him that's uh, fake or fa false that you can feel. And uh, I know exactly, I could write a book on feeling guilty about uh, not reading the Bible when I need to be and not praying when I need to pray. And uh, I'm thankful that the Lord, I looked over at Andy and my son-in-law, Brandon, and I said, what about them that don't ever read the Bible and they don't feel guilty? Right. Yeah. Amen. Thank God that you've got a conscience that bothers you. Right. Amen. Something that, 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 that lets you know your, your conscience waking you up. You haven't read the word uh, like you needed to. And we all know about the cares of life, don't we? Amen. We, they all get us from time to time. All right, if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to the book of Daniel. Amen. The book of Daniel. And uh, we're going to try to uh, bring out a few things. The Lord, uh, we, Brother Walter's leg still giving him some trouble. And uh, we definitely need to pray for him. The Lord would help him. He'd be able to get back and and to teach the word for us. We appreciate him. I appreciate everybody in the house of the Lord. I want to talk today about a word that... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That wasn't the word. <laughs> Amen. I want to talk today about the word humbleness. Amen. About humbleness. And uh, 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 that's something that uh, the Lord loves in his people. He loves a meek and a humble spirit. And uh, there, uh, no, now there's something about mankind. Uh, nobody, nobody, in the opposite of uh, being humble is someone that's having pride. And uh, there's nobody that feels like that they've got pride. Uh, nobody was going to stand up and say, well, I'm proudful or I'm boastful. Uh, nobody's going to be that or see that. But the thing about it is that God knows every soul in here. The scripture has said many times in the New Testament that God needed no man to testify for he knew what was in man. And God knows. I want you just to imagine a cup full of, uh, of water today and on the, on the outside of that cup, I want, I want you to imagine the word pride. And every one of you are that cup. Amen. Every one of you are that vessel. And God knows that how much, how much pride... Uh, that you have in that cup. And uh, I want to tell you today, if you've got pride, uh, the Bible said that God can't use you. Amen. God can't use anyone that has pride in their life. So uh, the opposite of that is humble. And how many times have we read in the Bible that we're supposed to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and God will exalt us in due time. Amen. How many times have we read the opposite of those that, uh, amen, that lift their self up, that we're supposed to be become submissive and to be the servant of one? Uh, and it's in every one of us. Even the disciples, uh, when they, they came back, the Bible said that their mother uh, went to Jesus and said, I'd like for my sons to be given uh, one a seat on the right hand on your left hand. And uh, one of them, in one of them, in their talking, in the twelve was talking. Who's the greatest among them? And Jesus said all these things to the Gentiles, but these things are not so among you. Right. He said, "He that's considered the greatest among you, Amen. He that's uh, let him become uh, your servant." So I'd like to ask you this question today, Amen. How much pride did you really have? Amen. How much pride do you really have? And the easiest thing for us to do as Christians is to look at Clyde, to look at Matt, to look at everybody else, and to judge them. But the Bible said they that measure themselves among themselves are not wise. It's no wisdom. Uh, there's no wisdom uh, in us judging ourselves by who we are. And most of the time when we talk about people and we run people down and we say a negative spirit against folks, most of the time while we're doing that, the Bible teaches us that it's sin because while doing that, we are lifting ourselves up above who they are. Right. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? That when you talk about somebody in a negative way to put them down, to hurt them, or to say negative things, what you're doing is exalting yourself. 
And these things ought not to be named among a Christian. They ought not to be do that. Now, I'm going to answer a million dollar question that has been going throughout our land. Uh, amen. I'm going to answer it for you today with the Word of God. Before I start reading, in, I want you to look in the book of Daniel, chapter number 2. And uh, Daniel, is. Uh, the Bible said that uh, Nebuchadnezzar in his first journey... Uh, to Jerusalem had chose out men of wisdom, men that was cunning, men that had a good spirit. The Bible said that he imported these men back uh, to Babylon and Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego was among that number. And Daniel now is brought before the king and uh, the Bible said that uh, in chapter 2 and verse 21, the land in, in our land that we're living in today, the question is, is God responsible for the coronavirus? Is God responsible for what's going on in our land and time? Now I'm going to let the Word of God answer this question for you. Now Daniel is Daniel just a few days ago was in Jerusalem at Solomon's temple. Amen. The glory of God was there. The power of God was there. But just in a short time, just in a short time, Jerusalem has been conquered. And now him and the captives are in Babylon. And they're there. And this is what Daniel had to say about it. Look at verse 21. Or 20. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what it is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. So, amen. Who is it that has changed the times? Who is it that, amen, sets them up and takes them down? Who's responsible for all of these things? I mean, the Bible said that he made evil for the day of evil. What's going on with all the writing and everything that's uh, going on in our land and country? I'm going to tell you who's in charge of it all. God. God is in charge of everything that's going on. And think how fast God has changed this around. Three or four months ago, none of these things would even mention among us. No. None of these things was even going on. Now churches are upside down. Now people of God are, amen, troubled on every hand. Preachers are uh, in a mess and all this virus going on and all of this talk in the, in the news and all of that, all of this is under the authority and the power of God Almighty. So I want you to understand that. I want you to know that God is the one that does all of these things and whether we want it to happen in our generation or not, none of us do. None of us want the mark of the beast to be set up. None of us want to go through the, the pressing times that's ahead of us. But there's going to have to be a generation that's going to have to endure this. Amen. And I don't want it to be me and I don't want it to be my children. I don't, I don't want it to be you and I don't want it to be your children. But somebody is going to have to go through and endure. Amen. So uh, I just want you to know that. Well, is all this leading up to the mark of the beast? I don't know. And all them fellers with them degrees, they don't know either. It's God that changes the times. It's God that changes the times, not man. It's God that does it. Now, I want to get to humbleness today. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of uh, Daniel, chapter number 3. Chapter number 4 it is. And I'm going to read to you a little bit, something that I don't normally do. But I want to read to you just a little bit here. Uh, but I want to let, enlighten to you what's going on here in the book of Daniel. Uh, uh, Daniel uh, is in the king's providence. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar has had this dream. And uh, the, no, none of the uh, uh, stargazers and the astrologers and none of these men could interpret this dream. And the Bible said that uh, the decree was so hard from Nebuchadnezzar, the king, that nobody could uh, to interpret the dream. And on top of that, he wouldn't tell man what the dream was. And the Bible said that the, there was going to be a death 
a, a pers- a, a annihilation of all of the wise men of Babylon if somebody wouldn't. That'd be just like Clyde come in here and say, I'm going to kill every one of you if you don't tell me the interpretation of this dream, but I'm not going to tell you the dream. Now that don't seem too fair, does it? That don't seem too right. But, but the Bible said that Daniel prayed and Daniel sought God and he sought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and had them to pray. And the scripture said that he had a dream. And in that dream, he began to tell, well, it, but I guess probably Nebuchadnezzar couldn't, amen, couldn't trust uh, the wise men to tell him to make sure that he was right. That's the only thing I can figure. But the Bible said that Daniel, whom the Spirit of God was in, came in and began to interpret the dream. And when he told the dream, it was exactly what that he had dreamed. Amen. Now you think about what a man of God that he was. The Scripture said that he had a dream and he saw this great tree uh, that was planted. Amen. And in that tree was uh, the uh, was uh, the fowls of the heavens was landed in that tree, and they Amen ate of that tree, and they nested in that tree. Underneath that tree was the beast of the field. They was under shade of that tree. And Daniel came in, Amen, and he began to make manifest, brother, what this was. And he said, "Thou art king." He said, "This in this dream is against them." Uh, them that hate thee, this dream is for them. Because Nebuchadnezzar realized after Daniel had talked to him that he was that tree. Amen. The Bible said just in a few chapters before that that he had had a dream that uh, uh, of the, the image of gold and he had seen that and Daniel explained to him that each one of those images, uh, each one of those, it started out with the head of gold right on down to the feet of clay. And Daniel inter- interpreted that and told him that each one of those, uh, 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 as it changed, as it went down, each one of those was kingdoms. Amen. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar, you are the head. There's never been a greater kingdom than Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. Right. The Bible said that all nations, all I'm not talking about America, I'm talking about all countries and all nations answered to the king Nebuchadnezzar. And if he wanted them to die, they died. It was so urgent that one, you remember back in Daniel chapter 1, it was so urgent that the king, the Bible said that the king, amen, uh, one of the servants of the king was so worried about Daniel and him not eating, amen, not drinking the wine and eating the meat of the king that he was afraid he was going to die because that he wasn't doing his part. So you see what a king that he was? He was a mighty man. Amen. All he had to do was turn his hand and judgment came upon them that didn't follow and them that didn't obey him. So, amen, what a king that he was. But here the most mighty king that's ever lived, the most mighty man, amen, that's ever lived on the face of the earth now has had a dream that he was a tree and that that tree is going to be hewn down. So he called, he called up old Daniel. And that's where we're going to read at today in a... Uh, uh, Chapter number 4. Let's start reading at verse number 19. He said, Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all, and under, under which the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto the heaven, and the dominion is to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, hew the tree down. Now think about that. And destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation. Now that was the dream. And now the most mighty king that has ever lived in history, according to the Bible, not me, 
Amen. I ain't got enough sense to go to Bible college and, amen, read, the, read all that stuff, the history of all that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. The Bible said this is the interpretation. He said, verse 25, they shall, verse 24, this is the interpretation. This is the decree of the Most High which come upon the Lord my King that they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field and they shall make thee to eat the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Now you need to pay attention to that right there. Right. Amen. Don't go to sleep on me this morning. You need to understand that all of these things that's going on in our land and people's worried about the election... And I believe we need to do the best we can. And I believe we need to support the very best one that we can. Yeah. But if it don't work out our way, you've got to understand behind the, behind the, amen, the curtain, God's got the hand of the puppets. It's God that's doing everything that's being done. Now, preacher, what am I to do? You're to live right. You're to have the Holy Ghost in working and moving in your life and let the Lord take care of everything else. Now, I promise you, amen, we ain't going nowhere where nobody ain't been before. Amen. We ain't going nowhere where nobody that ain't been before. And they trusted him. And they was delivered. And if you and I will trust him, amen, he's going to deliver us. Now let's see what this mighty king had here. The Bible said, whereas verse 26, or verse 25, he said they, 26, I done read that. He said, and whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots of thy kingdom, they shall be sure unto thee, after thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Verse 27. Now Daniel's getting ready to give him a little preaching message. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Break off the sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of the tranquility. They were seven years that was a coming of pure hell to this king. He was in the best times of his life. The whole world answered under this man. Right. This man had so much majesty and so much glory, it, it would behoove you and I, amen, to even begin to comprehend the power that he had. Right. The power that he had. But the Bible said, amen, that, all, that in the last days when the mark of the beast is set up and the false prophet, that the whole world is going to wander after him. Right. Now if this God back in Nebuchadnezzar's day took care of Nebuchadnezzar, during these seven years and took care of God's children during these seven years. It ain't that we may not have to go through trouble because we will. But we ought to take comfort in knowing that our God that ruled back then is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forevermore. And if God took care of them back then, He'll take care of you and I today. Now Daniel is a telling this king, God has given you all this. You're that tree that you had that dream about, but you're going to be cut down. And seven years is the time of the, of the vision that it's going to... Seven years is how long it's going to take, amen, for you to be restored unto him that, amen, that had the power to cut you down. Amen. But if you want to do anything, King, you do good to the poor. Yeah. You cut your sins off, amen, and start living a righteous life. Listen to that. He said that the lengthening, by the lengthening, that it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Daniel was saying... God may have mercy on you, O king, yeah. if, you, if you try to behave yourself and do a little something good. But God knows, and you and I know, that man, it's hard for man to have success without it going to his head. Amen. Yeah. It's hard for man to have, amen, much of anything without it going to his head and man sticking out his chest and saying, look, now that's what the definition of pride is. Yeah. It's achievements that's made by one's own self. And the Bible said that the man in Jesus talked about the man that said, I will tear down my barns and I will bestow my goods and I will say, now the problem with that was I, 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 I. And the problem with you and I today and the problem with America and the problem with the church and the problem with the preachers and the problem with everybody, it's I, 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 I. Lovers of their own selves. Amen. The Bible said, no, now somebody said, I don't like myself. You're a liar. The Bible said, no man hateth himself. 
but he loveth himself, right. cherisheth himself. I don't ever hear Jason Nunley going around running down Jason Nunley. I don't ever hear Jason Nunley going around and talking about the things that I do. Amen. You know why? Because I love me. Right. And you love you. Right. You can act like you don't, but you, amen. So we as the people of God have got to read the Bible and study the Scriptures to realize who we are and who the God that's got all this under control is. And when we realize that, we are to bow our knees before the God of heaven and humble ourselves. You know why the pews ain't full every Sunday? Pride. Man's a living on his own bread. Man's a doing his own thing. Man's a doing his own power. God said, I want my children to humble. I want my children to be the most mighty king that ever lived as they're getting ready to be cut down. Now let's see if he learned anything. Verse number 28. He said, all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months. 12 months from the day that Daniel told it was going to happen, I guess by, amen, the 11th month, he had done forgot it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you forgot that it's God that's making your heart beat? Right. No. What has the preacher's got to prime you to praise him? Yes. What has the preacher's got to prime you to testify? Yes, what has the preacher's got to prime you to be faithful to church? Yeah, Why have we got to beg you? Why do we got to plead with you to read your Bible? Why do we got to plead with you to read, amen, to have a prayer life and just to talk to God? I'm going to tell you why. We're full of pride. You see, Paul, Peter said we've not been redeemed by corruptible things. If we've not been redeemed by them, why do we serve them? Why do we serve them? He said we're not redeemed by corruptible things as silver and of gold. Now Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Right. You'll love the woman, want one, and you'll hate the other. Right. And then he said God, can, man cannot serve God and mammon. Right. What's the definition of mammon? Right. Money. And what did Paul tell Timothy? The love of was the root of all evil. Right. It ain't the dollar, but it's the love of that dollar. Right. That's causing men, amen, to stray away from God. Right. I'd rather for my children to pick up pop cans and have nothing. And be meek and humble. You see, that Brother Stephen Reynolds, I was telling Brother Walter what a great, great teacher that he was and uh, how knowledgeable that he was. Well, Brother Walter, I know men that's got some of probably as much knowledge as he's got, but I don't like to hear them teach. That's right. You know why? Right. Because he's got the spirit of humbleness. Yeah. Right. That's what I like about Brother Walter when he gets up and teaches. You can see tears are running down his face. When's the last time you cried? Right. I mean, when's the last time you cried? People that's full of pride don't cry. Right. One man stood and said, My daddy died, yeah. Michael Barnett. Michael Barnett, this dead and gone now that had the brain tumor. I worked with him at UPS, and Michael Barnett told me, he said, I had six or seven brothers. And he said, My daddy died, and every one of my brothers cried. And I walked right by the, the casket, and I was the only brother that didn't cry. And I looked at him, and I said, If God ever lays his hand on you, you'll break down like a baby. <laughs> You see, God can cut you down. Do you understand what I'm telling you? God can cut you down in the blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye. God can take everything you've got away from you. That's why we ought to be so humble in His presence. That's why we ought to bow our knees and bow our heart and bow our minds and bow everything that we've got and show the humbleness to our God. That God is God that giveth life and is God that, amen, taketh life. It's God that gives everything to us. I remember one night, about midnight, I got a phone call. And it was Michael Barnett on the other line. I, I, we worked at night shift. We worked at shift at night and and I told him, I said, Michael, I went back. I was at the door and I went back and I told him, I was a witness to him, trying to win him to God. And I told him, I said, uh, I feel like telling you one more verse before I leave. He said, okay, preacher, go ahead. Just a laugh at him. Pride will make you laugh at the preacher. Pride will make you sit there with your arms folded like you don't hear, like you're not hearing me right now. That's all it is, it's pride. That's, and God knows how much you got of it. And I told him, I said, Michael, the Bible said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I left that day. As the last words I told him, two or three days that went by, and I, I got a phone call. I was living out of South Hosea Lake then, and 
It was Michael Barnett. My wife said, you better hurry. There's somebody else crying and screaming on the phone. I didn't know what it was. I thought the accident had happened. It was Michael Barnett. And he said, Jason, I can't get it off my mind. I said, who is this? He, I, he, I said, who is this I'm talking to me? He was crying so much and so wrapped up in his tears. He said, this is Michael and he said, all I've thought about was old taste and see that the Lord is good. He quoted to me what, he, what I told him. He said, I need to pray right now. I need to pray right now. Amen. He, I said, well, let's pray over the phone. He said, no, I need to see you. I need to see you. And he lived over at St. Paul. And uh, I lived over to Lake. And I said, I'll tell you what, you know where Flat Rock Church is. And uh, he said, yeah. And I said, well, I'll meet you there. So here I go about midnight. And I met him over at Flat Rock Church. And it had been raining. It was raining then. Or in the rain. And... Uh, he got in. I thought, well, I'll walk him down the Roman road. Brother Tim didn't tell him about it. He said, no, no, I ain't got time for that. I need to pray. I need to pray. God is my witness. There's a big mud hole right there where, we, where he had parked at. And he got out and he fell right down in that mud hole. That boy that had not never cried because of pride was in his face. And pride was in his brain that he was a big man and thought he was a big somebody. Amen. God struck him down. Right in the mud hole, he's a screaming to God, God, don't let me go to hell. I will tell you today, God will knock you off of your feet. Praise the Lord, Jason. He'll be the best Praise thing that ever happened to you. Because what I'm getting ready to tell you, amen, if you'll do, if you'll do it before God does it, amen, it's better off for you. You see, the Bible said, humble you. People don't pray. You, you, they don't come to the altar because they're full of pride. Right. You say, well, preacher, man, you, some of you ain't come to the altar in years. Yeah. Yeah, You're Lord. telling me every preacher that comes through here ain't got something for you? Amen. You mean all the preachers and the messages that you've heard, somebody ain't rung your bell? Right. And you still ain't come to the I'm going to tell you why you ain't come. Pride! Amen. Nebuchadnezzar had pride. He had pride. He had pride. And here's what the Bible said. Amen. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And then spake he. He walked on his front porch and he said, Is this not great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? You know why some preachers can't, amen, be... Amen. They can't be successful in preaching. Because I and my. You know why some churches will never grow over 25? I and my. They won't get out of the way and they won't let the God of heaven receive the glory. I'm telling you right. Paul said, Amen. He said, You want to talk? He talked to his own people and he said, You want to talk about, Amen, Pharisees? He said, I'm a Pharisee. He said, You want to talk about persecutions? He said, how many of you been stoned? That's right. How many of you received 40 of the Jews received, he said, uh, uh, stripes on your back? How many of you did that? Yeah. How many of you, he was going to talk about Israel. He said, of the stock of, ben, of, a, of Abraham, the, the tribe of Benjamin. Amen. You want to talk about all that? But he said, I labored more than all of you. Yeah. I, all of you put together ain't done what I've done. Paul said, I'll tell you something even greater than that. About 14 years ago, and he changed to him. I'm going to feel that again. And he changed. And he changed. Amen. He's talking. He went to talking about, I received stripes and I'm of the trouble. And he said, I'm going to be humble right here. He said, I knew a man. Amen. About 14 years ago, in the body or in the spirit, I cannot tell. I knew such a man that was called up. Oh, that man seen stuff that couldn't even be wrote down on the paper. That man, uh, amen, seen stuff that couldn't even be pronounced from the pulpit. Oh, he said, I knew such a man. Then he changed his attitude again. And he said, because of them visions and them revelations that I had, he said, God put in me a thorn in my side. Amen. You know, I'll tell you something. All you are praying about something that God give it to you. Yeah. Because God give it to you to keep you humble. Amen. God keep it to, give it to you to keep you on your knees. Right. God give it to you. I'm not talking about tempting you with sin. Right. I'm talking about they just things in your life that you went to the altar over and over and over and you've never been delivered from it. And Paul was the same way. He said, I talked to Jesus today, but he didn't hear me. Amen. I talked to him tomorrow, but he didn't hear me. Finally, I went back the third time and I said, Jesus, 
Can you hear me? He says, oh, Paul, I want you to get this thorn out of my side. Yeah. And I can hear the Lord say, Paul, because of all of them revelations and all of them things that I've blessed you with and all of that glory, amen, he said, it was given me a thorn. Yeah. To keep me yeah. humble. Right. We ought to be we ought to come crawling the through the back door every time the gates of the house of God's open are crawling. That's and they're not even looking over. That's Some of you ain't never crawled. Yes. That's you ain't never crawled around this church. You'll try sometime on that walk. I remember the last time you crawled around yeah, through here. Yeah. I remember yeah. Dave Thomas. He said, All my life I, when I come to Antioch, I've seen people are crawling around this church. But he said it took cancer. Yeah. To get me to walk, to crawl. So he said, today, I've got cancer and God's humbled me down. And now I'm ready to crawl. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Left that pew right over there, didn't he, Scarlett? <laughs> Amen. Where you at, sir? She said, Sunday school started a crawling around the church. Now, God knows what to take from you. Yes. Yes. Do you hear what I told you? Yeah. So I said, God won't do it. I'm going to tell you, I'm tell you something. Yeah, yeah. I was a witness unto a man. I was a witness unto a man. I've seen, oh, I still see the work. I was a witness unto a man, and I was telling that man about God. And I told him, I said, God's got a way of getting your attention. When, when Moses went down to Pharaoh, the first thing that Moses told Pharaoh, that before the plagues, before any of that happened, God was going to take his first one to be the Now you read that Bible, and you read it a little closer next time, and you see if God wouldn't tell Pharaoh, before anything happened, his first one would be taken. Right. Yeah. I remember that man telling that man about God, amen, about the Lord getting his attention. He looked at me that day. This was, I mean, I want you to know I got more sense to lie to you. I'll go to hell if I'm a liar. Right. I ain't a lying to you. Right. All liars will have their part. And that man looked at me and said, if there's a God like that that would take my boy, he said, I don't want nothing to do with the God like that. Yeah. He walked off. He wasn't a month. He wasn't a month. He wasn't a month. Him and his wife it was at a, it was at a at the grocery store, and they're young and in the back seat. They're young. They're first born. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Come on, buddy. They're first born in the back seat, and they forgot to crack the windows, and they went in just to get some milk. But they met some people, and it was like a hundred degrees that day, so hot. And they come back out, and they stayed in there too long, and God yeah. took the first born. Come on. God will take your babies from you. Yeah, bless the Lord. To get you on your knees. Yeah, bless the Lord. Jesus. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, God ain't like it. Who are you to say yeah. who is like that? That's right. That's who are you to point at God? Amen. I remember Brother Lawrence Horn that's dead and gone now. I remember Brother Lawrence Horn. He said there were people in his church that they used their kids for. Well, they had to take the kids to football. They had to take the kids to the... And they never was faithful to revival. And they never was faithful to prayer meeting. They never was faithful to coming to the house of God. And it bothers the man of God when that goes on. Yeah. It bothers him. Yeah. Brother Old Lawrence said, I was on my knees of praying. And he said, God told me to go preach to him. When God takes your excuse away. Yeah. And he said, the very, the very next week after I preached that message, he said, all of their, amen, some of their children was in a car wreck and died and left here. Amen. God took their excuse away. Amen, Jason. God, God I'm afraid of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm afraid of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I fear you. Amen. You have my life and my right. children's life in your hands. Yeah, the most mighty king in the world is getting ready to go through something and God can make him humble now. What can God do to you? Amen. 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 Let's read this. Come on, I want to do it before these youngins get back. The Bible said, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it's spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and the dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to him whomsoever he will. There it is again. He's a given the kingdom to whoever he will. The same hour. Oh, Babylon. Oh, Babylon, alas, alas, that great city. How long did it take? One hour. 
And old Daniel said, King, I saw a stone that was hewn out of the mountains. Now this stone wasn't made by him. But I saw that stone and it tore down that golden head. And it tore down them silver. Amen. That silver chest. It tore down every one of them kingdoms. Right. Who was that stone? I heard about that stone. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. the Holy Ghost. Bless his good name. Okay. This king that's got all this power. Now I'm going to quit when they all get in here. I promise I am. When this king that had all this power went out on his porch and now the tree, the Bible said, they chased him out into the field. Come on. This was God's judgment on him. Yeah. For seven years he grew eagle wings. Like wings of an eagle, like a bird. Yeah, yeah. Feathers, that's right. Mm -hmm. Claws on his hands. Yeah. And walked around this world for seven years. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. How that palace and what happened to the kingdom during all that? Yeah. I don't know. But it was just like God was holding him in place yeah. to teach this man a lesson. Yeah, that's right. And after the end of seven years, one day the sun come up at the seventh year, and God said, okay, the king, get up. He got up, the eagle feathers were gone, the claws were gone, and the same steps that led him out was the leading him back in. And he's back in the palace now. He's back in the palace. And let's read what old Nebuchadnezzar had to say. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 35. And to all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. White man, red man, yellow man, black man, purple man, green man. There is nothing. And he doeth according to the will in the army of heaven. I'm so glad I'm on your side. And among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stand him. None can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Has there ever been a, a piece of clay look up and say, Mr. Potter, what are you doing? Right, that's right. Yeah. So who are you? Yeah. Yeah. And who am I? Right. What's he trying to do? He's trying for us to humble. That's right. Yeah. Come on. Humble Amen. ourselves. Yeah. Hard to do it. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. All them preachers come out of the camp meeting a few years ago. There was like seven preachers had started preaching. And I went down to Brother Johnny's. Uh, and boy, I mean, preacher, you got to watch this, Timothy. Amen. God's got his hand on you. But you have to fight this. You will. You have to fight all them preachers. You know, when I, they said good day, God bless you. And all them young men coming up to me like, I'm a God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pat me on the back right. line like that. But in my mind, I thought, I know who I am. And I went in there in the bathroom, in the men's bathroom. Amen. I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm not trying to be ugly. Amen. But I didn't care what was on the floor. And I told God, I said, God, I want you to know what I think of who I am. And I put my face right down against that toilet. And I just laid there. I just laid there. And I said, God, this is who I am. This is who I am. I'm nothing without you. I can't do anything without you, God. I'm nothing, Lord. I'm nothing. I just laid there. Lay there, and I just lay there. And I said, God, when you know it, you let me know, and I'll get up. I'll get up. That's what God was doing to Nebuchadnezzar. Right. He was assuring him who he was. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all are asleep. I'm going to tell you. Come on. We got more now than we've ever got. Can you still cry? Yeah. I've got nicer homes, nicer clothes. We've got nicer everything. Come on in, children. We've got nicer everything. Can you still cry? When they sing, I'm free. Can you sing when they're amazing grace? Can you still look up to heaven and say, Lord, let me tell you how, what Jesus thought about humbleness. I'll close right here. Let me read 37. Look at it. I want you to see it through your eyes. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, 
praise and exalt and honor the King of heaven. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. You, you don't have to amen it. You don't have to say amen. But America, listen to me. Listen to me. Antioch, listen. Every knee. Every tongue. What are you talking about? You're going to bow. You're going to bow under the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to bow. And you know what you're going to say? He is the Son of God. And God's going to hear it in His ears. Amen. And He's going to go in. God's going to hear it in His ears. Amen. When the centurion after the earthquake yeah. and the veil was rent and the light had flashed. Amen. When all of that was done, Surely, Surely, this man must be. Not, but it's too late. He was done crucified. He was done crucified. It's going to be too late when they see him coming in the clouds. They're going to smoke themselves and say, Surely, I want to bow now. Amen. I want to confess now. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Lord of God. Praise the Lord. He's the Son of the living God. He's the Son of the living God. Praise God. I had a dream. I had a dream. I told him I'm going to tell it again. And in my dream, I was a dying. I was a dying. Come on. And in that dream, I was a dying. I've always been a marvel at the last words of the man. Yeah. I've searched every book, every book in the Bible. I've always wanted to hear what the last words of a man was. That's why I like, I've talked about your mommy so many times. Her last words was, Daddy, come hold my hand while I cross the river. <laughs> last words. <laughs> last words. You know what I'm talking about. I know there was a time my boy Zachary was standing over crop of me crying. And they were saying, Daddy, don't leave me. Daddy, don't leave me. But I looked up at him in my dream. I said, Son, this is what I've been waiting on. <laughs> I said, this is what I've been waiting all my life on. Don't worry about me. And I felt the presence of God like I never felt in my life in that day. And I was getting ready to die. And in my mind, I was thinking, now, somebody is going to hear the last words that I have to say. Yeah. And somebody's going to talk about it. So I want it to be right. Yeah. So I thought, I'll tell you what. I thought in my mind, I thought, I'll tell Christy I love her. I thought, I'll take your last words that I have. And somebody says, I'll tell them that I love her. I thank God for it. And I say, well, I'll tell my children that I love them. And all like that. I mean, what would you say? If you had one more last statement and 20 seconds, you're going to die. But you know what I said in my dream? I opened my mouth and I said this. I confess the Lord Jesus Christ to be the Son of the living God. And that's pretty pleasing. <laughs> Here in 2020, I'm pretty pleased to tell you that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Now, my question to you is, come on, sir, let's get a song to take off. My question to you is, will you bow? Will you humble yourself? Will you humble yourself? Will you bow? When the world's on fire, men's are running to the rocks and the cliffs. Too late to bow then. But man, they ain't never learned nothing. You listening to me? The next chapter, his own son, his own flesh and blood, took of the golden vessels of the house of the Lord that they'd taken out of Jerusalem. They got put liquor in them and wine. And they got to getting drunk on them. Got to getting drunk on them. And right during the middle of their big party, that man's hand come down. Me nay, me nay. And it made the king. Look up here at my knees. I ain't doing the boogie. I want you to know, young lady, young man, if you don't know him, this is coming. <laughs> 
You hear me? This is coming. They need smoke to get there. They were none of them big professors able to do it. But they chose Daniel and whom the spirit of the living God. God. <laughs> and Daniel come to the king. Are you listening to me? Daniel come to the king come and said, your daddy was humbled in a field for seven years and you knew what God did to your daddy and it didn't do you a bit of good. Right. Amen. Come on. And now your kingdom's number and the night you won't die. Yeah. Well, it's all right. Hold your head up there big and tall. Amen. Just let the government keep putting money in your pockets. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to work. Just, just keep going getting your food. Yeah, that's, right. that's all right. That's all right. Just go to church and live and laugh and go on. But she's are coming to an end. And if you ain't ready, you're going to be a looking up the preacher. You're going to be a knocking on my door. But I'm going to be with him. Hallelujah. I'm going to be with him. I'm glad I'm saved. Now, if you love the Lord and you're humble in your heart and you can say amen to all this, you probably feel pretty good right now. But if you've got old Mr. Pride in you and you won't pray and you won't read your Bible and you won't do anything toward God, you probably feel like an old rotten egg at the bottom of the barrel. And I'm glad you do. Because God said to repent and turn from your wicked ways. I love you. Let's all stand. Sing, girl, sing. We're going to go down to the river after a while. Hallelujah. I have no riches. Come on, young. away. to the right or left of you and smile at them and say God bless you. It'll make you feel better. Praise the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. That's what the message of God in the Sunday school lesson is today. Humble yourself. city. I want you to sing that song about that city. And all of you that's got your ticket to that city, I want you to rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known. The Lord is at hand. Let's rejoice in the Lord. This Brother Clyde scripture, I mean, man, he just kind of left us hanging this morning. Brother Clyde, where'd you go to? Amen. He just he said, let not your heart be troubled. I want to hear more. How about y'all? He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. Sing it, girl. Sing it. It's what's waiting on us. It's what's waiting on us. There's a city over yonder not made with human hands. A place where Oh! 
touch you this morning. You're headed that way. Can you wave at him? They're waving at us. You know what they're saying? Hold on, children. They're waving at us. You could figure it up. But then I got saved and I never got baptized. I remember when I stepped out, we're going to go down here to, I got permission today. I know it's all posted, but we called the lady and got permission to go down here to a regular Baptist church. I called the lady and when I stepped out of the vehicle, Brother Tim, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, the next time that you walk down this hill, the next time you walk down this hill, you'll be a preacher. The next time. God was dealing with me to preach. The next time. And when I got baptized that day, and just right after that, God called me to preach. And then right after that, we had a baptizer. And that man right there, amen, I took his head up. So the Holy Ghost knows what's ahead for Jesse. He knows what's ahead for Jesse. I believe the Lord's going to use him in a mighty way. I believe the Lord's going to use him. He's going to use all of us that will make ourselves available to him. He'll use all of us. Amen. Let's pray for my mom and pray for Brother Walter and then we'll come and have prayer for Brother Jack. Lord, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we speak peace, God, unto the battles. We speak peace, God, unto the troubles and the trials, God, knowing, Lord, that the eyes of Christ, Lord, they look down in great love and mercy as a father hated his children. Lord, we love you today, God. Lord, we believe in you. We know you've got the power, God. Touch Brother Walter, Lord. I pray for him, God. I know, Lord, the doctor said maybe five or six weeks, but you're able to touch him and raise him up, Lord. I've seen you do it before, and I know you'll do it again. Then this precious mother, Lord, this wife is sitting there by her husband. I pray, God, that you'll help her and comfort her. Bless Brother Brandon, God. I pray, God, you know what his need is, his request. God, we're depending on you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Everybody that loves him and wants to just feels like you want to pray for him. Amen. Bless the Lord. The more the merrier. Praise God. Jesus, holy name. Amen. Love you, Praise the Lord Jesus. Anybody else want to come? Amen. Come right on. Come right on. Amen. He may win on Levi. See how this works? Amen. He may be the very one. Old Jason can't reach him. Oh, you see what I'm saying? That's right. Amen. Boy, I'm just thankful. Amen. Come on, Mom. You've got a lot invested in this. In Jesus, holy name. Come on, Brother Jim. Amen. Amen. This is this is like the horn of all the saints. Yeah. Pour it on little David's head. Amen. Oh. He anointed him way before he went and told the guy. 
Y'all feel the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Yeah. What's it feel like? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It makes me feel like you're mad. It's all right. I told Brother Michael, I ain't, I ain't got that black stuff in me. I can't do what they do. Sometimes I need to do it. <laughs> That's now. That's what it's about. Get it now. God has let our eyes see something great today. Amen. Let's lay hands on it. Hallelujah. Daddy, lead us to the Lord. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Oh, God, as we anoint this young man today, God, oh, Lord, we pray today, God, for him, that you would help him, Lord. God, that the hand of the Spirit of God that led Moses, that same hand that led David and Samson, all these mighty men of valor, Lord, may your hand be strong upon Jacob's life. I pray today, God, that you'd give him wisdom of the word of God. Lord God, give him a desire to feed and help the sheep. And God, to see the Lord say, I pray today, God, that you would anoint him, Lord, from the top of his head. Lord, to the sole of his feet, that today, oh God, in the heavens would be a day written down. That a young man, God, received his call and stepped out in the vineyard. Oh God, to go forth and pray. God, bring the talents in, God, that you've given him. And bring talents back to gain. Oh God, today, Lord, I pray you protect him. I pray the Spirit of God would be upon his life. Oh God, we're thankful now. Help him in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, buddy. Praise God. Praise the Lord. How many of you ready to hear him preach? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> let's pray that God of heaven would help him. God bless you. It's good to be here this morning. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading out of Revelation chapter 2. Heaven, Jesus. First of all, I want to thank the Lord for saving me and all He's done for me and for calling me to preach. And uh, yeah. I hope that uh, this can help you all. And uh, He gave it to me the other week. I was praying and uh, I asked Him what He'd have me to preach. And I had a message and He changed my mind. And I know it's for a reason for somebody here. And uh, we're going to start reading in verse 1 in Revelation chapter 2. <clears throat> It says, And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saying, He that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thy, can and thou, how thy canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not uh, fainted. And these are the two I want to focus on. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first works. For else I will come unto you quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, and accept thou repent. Amen. I'm going to read verse 16. It says, Repent, or else I will come unto you quickly and will fight against them which, with the sword of my mouth. And that's all I'd like to read. And thank you all for standing for the reading of the Word of God. And I was reading this the other day, and it got me thinking about how, uh, some, how a lot of people, they get saved when they're young and they run from God. And I believe that you can backslide. I'm not saying that you get saved and you just stay saved, but... I believe you can backslide, and some people have left their first love, and if I could, if the Lord would help me, that's what I'd like to preach on this morning, yes. returning to your first love. There's a lot of people that go out and they think that alcohol and drugs are the answer, and they, they've known their first love when they was younger, and they've left it, and the people, that were, the people that were around them, they know how you are. I left my first love, and I was running from the call to preach, and I backslid from the Lord, and uh, the, my parents and everybody around me knew that my attitude had changed. They knew that I was different, and they knew that it was for the wrong reason. And uh, I think 
I think a lot of people think that they'll be all right and they have time to come back, but as he was teaching, he said, you never know the day or the hour when the Son of Man cometh, and you never know when he's going to come until you split the eastern skies, and you're going to be standing there, and you're going to be wondering, what am I going to do? There's nothing I can do, and that's what I'm trying to get to you tonight, or to this morning. You can return to your first love, and it says right here, if you, keep, if you go to chapter 3 in Revelation, in verse number 12, or verse number 15 and 16 it says I know thy works that thou art uh, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot I would I would thou I wouldst thou were cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm I will neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth and the Lord he's he's faithful and just to forgive you but if you're if you're lukewarm and you're in between and you go to church and you just play it your whole life and you don't have any any desire to read or any desire to pray, and I've been there, and it's not fun. You're miserable, and you th might you might think you're happy, but you're not happy at all. And you 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 think you have the right the right things in line, and you think your life's planned out, but you don't have nothing. All you got is just that sin that you're grabbing onto because that's, you're trying to fill that void that's inside of you that the Lord can help you with. But right here in verse 20, it says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." And knock, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and I will sup with him and he with me. If you come and when he's knocking on your heart's door and he will, he will come and knock on your heart's door, he's promised every man one opportunity. He don't have to call on you again. And maybe when you were little, you had that opportunity and you accepted it. But if he's calling on you again today, then you can come to the Lord and you can accept what he has for you and you can sup with him. And all the people that say, oh, you're just playing church, don't listen to him. I had to listen to him. And I, and I was, I, I've had the devil been fighting me the past week saying, you're not ready, you don't know what you're talking about. But this morning I feel like there's someone here that needs help, that has, that's been backslid on the Lord, and that needs help. And uh, you know who you are, God knows who you are, I don't know the souls of anybody in here. But it says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If he's knocking on your heart's door, you need to accept the Lord. And there's nothing better than the Lord. You might think all the sex in the world, the drugs and the alcohol and all this stuff that you think you have. You think you have it under control. You might have a grasp on life. But you ain't got nothing without the Lord. You're miserable. You don't have any, you don't have any plans for the future. There's nothing that can hold you there. You're just willy-nilly. There's nothing holding you there. But once you get a hold of the Lord and you hold on to him, he'll hold on to you. But as long as you hold on to him and you keep his commandments, he won't let you fall. But if you turn away from him, he will let you fall. But he will still be watching over you, and I thank the Lord for saving me. And if y'all have any sin in your life, and you've been, and you've been fought, and uh, you backslid on the Lord, it says, I stand at the door and knock. You know, you can't be lukewarm. He's knocking on your heart's door, and you can sup with the Lord today. And I want to thank the Lord for saving me and for all he's brought me through. Amen. And it says here in the, uh, what I, my text, it says, um, uh, it says, because thou hast left thy first love. You might have loved him. You could be older this morning. I don't know. You might have loved him, and you might have turned away from your first love. But he's always waiting there with open arms, and he'll, he'll take you in any time you need to, Lord. And I might not, I'm just a young man, and I don't, uh, you might not think I know what I'm talking about, but I'm not the one talking this morning. The Lord's talking through me, and He gave me this message, and He's knocking on your heart's door. And if you accept Him, it'll be the best thing that'll ever happen to you. It'll be the greatest thing that'll ever happen to you. He'll use you in a mighty way, and He'll do everything. He'll do everything. There might be battles, and there might be struggles in your life, but if you hold on to God, He'll hold on to you. And I just thank the Lord for all He's done for me, and that's all I got, and I thank the Lord for saving me. There's some in here that I know, um, I know you aren't right. I've talked to you about it, and uh, I'm not pointing you out at all. I'm just, I'm trying to reach out a hand. I do, and there's some people, some people I don't know your heart. You might be playing church. You might be thinking, you might be thinking I'm good, but you're not fine, and you know you're not fine if you're not. And uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different people that'll try to talk you into thinking that you're saved. And uh, I don't want to be that person. If you know you're lost and you're lost, then you need to come. And he's knocking at your heart's door. And uh, he said, if you're lukewarm, we'll spew you out of his mouth. And I don't want to be spewed out of his mouth. 
And if there's anybody who's lukewarm and who wants to come pray, uh, I'd be more than happy to pray with you if you want to come up here to the altar and uh, maybe rededicate your life to the Lord or give your heart to the Lord for the first time. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody here loves you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't turn it away if you feel it. You'll be miserable. Don't turn it away. No one's going to look at you and think anything bad of you. Everybody's going to gather around you and pray for you. knocking at somebody's heart. I don't know who, but I know he's knocking at somebody's heart. And if you just come to the altar, that's all you got to do, make that first step. And uh, that's all you have to do. There's nothing, there's nothing in the world that you can have that the Lord hasn't blessed you with. Is there anybody else who'd like to come pray? If there's no one else, let's come around and pray so that the Lord will help the lost and help this man. a wonderful first message. Amen. I thank the Lord for that. I told him I wish I'd have done Brother Clyde as good the first time I ever preached as he did today. I appreciate that. You know, it ain't about the jumping high. It ain't about all that. It's about the message and the word. And the word was, if you've walked away, he's knocking at your door. So you can't, you can't get away from that. You can get away from that jumping man. You can get away from that preacher that hollers, but you can't get away from that door and that knock. And if he's knocking at your door, and I, I'm just like him, I feel, amen, congregation this big, not knowing a heart in here, I'm sure the Lord's probably talking to somebody. And uh, we just pray the Lord will help you, amen, to find what you need today. So let's give the man of God a hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Stay tuned. There's greater things to come from the redhead preacher.
<laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love him. I thank the Lord for it. Anybody got a testimony before we change the order of the service? Got something from the Lord now you want to say? I'd like to thank the Lord for the Sunday school lesson this morning. Jason, I honestly believe that's about as good as I've heard on, on what you were teaching on. That, that put it about as plain as I appreciate that. I've heard it. And uh, I appreciate it. I pray my children and my grandchildren let that go deep in their heart and in Don's heart. Amen. I, I don't want to to get in our way. But God help me. Me too. And, and while we can build up over pride, bad things happen to me and my family. And I know God showed me with over pride. And it, it, it's just that you've done a wonderful job. You, you showed it as plain as it can be taught. And, uh, and I appreciate it. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you. I, I'm looking forward to going down to the river. Now, if anybody wants to take their phones and take a self video of their family, all like that's okay. But we won't put none of that today on on uh, on the internet or on Facebook. Some folks ask us not to do that, and we understand that. And uh, so, uh, anybody wants to take a picture or anything of their family getting baptized, all that's well. Uh, but we're looking forward to going down. We're going to go right now down to the old regular Baptist church, and uh, some folks is asked to be baptized. And uh, he read the scripture today. Now I've done been baptized myself. I've done been baptized, and uh, but I want to be baptized again. And uh, the Bible said, do your first works over. And I never backslid. I never quit. Uh, but I just, I, just, I just want to renew my faith with God. Renew just like a married couple for 50 years that's been married. And they want to renew their vows. I just want to renew my vow with God. Amen. And if you say, well, the preacher got baptized. Something must be wrong. You just tell them something must be right. Amen. And that's why I'm getting baptized. So uh, if you want to do that today. And uh, if you've been saved and you ain't saved, or you ain't like Brother Jacob preached today, you ain't where you need to be, you see somebody after church and we'll, we'll pray with you and you can find what you need from the Lord, find what you need from God. So uh, I don't know who all will be here. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just 1130. I've got one announcement I need to make. This coming Wednesday night, uh, we'll be preaching at Brother Eddie Gobble's church. Brother Eddie was here two weeks ago. And uh, we will be preaching for him, so we won't be having prayer meeting here this Wednesday night. Uh, we'll be at Brother Eddie's church at Barnes Chapel. So everybody, please remember that. And uh, everybody, let's, let's, let's just fill their church up over there. They, was, they had a great support that night from them. And I need to tell all y'all something happened this week that's, that's just really unusual. Uh, I got a call from a man that came to our camp meeting. And uh, uh, I... I didn't know who he was, and I still don't know really who he is. Uh, but while he was in our camp meeting, uh, the Lord spoke to him about uh, having prayer, about men of God coming together in their churches about prayer. And he said, Brother Jason, I see the right. I, what triggered his uh, thought was the place of prayer that we all talk about up here at the Rock Pile, where all the children go and pray. And uh, he uh, asked me if I would contact all the preachers that I know. So I did that, and uh, yesterday uh, at the Veterans Park in f uh, front of Kroger's in Abingdon, there was uh, at least 15 or 16, Sister uh, Vicky's uh, uh, papa was there, Brother Stanley, and uh, there was preachers there of every denomination, that I, words that I don't even know what they're called. Uh, there was uh, preachers there in shorts, uh, there was a priest there, there was Episcopalian there, uh, they was uh, every kind of denomination you was. And the man that had summoned us, summoned us all together uh, said this. He said that God spoke to me and told me to get all the churches together and to come pray. And I told the brother, I said, I know a man, Paul Price, years ago when his boy was in a bad car wreck at the lake, they give, his, uh, they give him his boy up, Brian, to die. They, they wanted to donate his organs, but Paul said, leave them in there. And Paul told me, he said, Jason, he said, Jehovah Witnesses come by. He said, Catholic priests come by. And everybody offered prayer. And he said, when you got a boy that's in there that's wanting, they're wanting to cut their organs out, he said, when you're in that kind of trouble and somebody's willing to pray, he said, it don't matter who they are. 
He said, we're going to pray. He said, let them pray. And I told that brother, I said, brother, we ain't got a boy that's in the hospital like that, but we've got a country that's in the same hospital. And I, it don't matter. It was folks that had the priest stuff on. I don't know what they was, but they was a spirit there yesterday. That was from God. They was a spirit. And the preacher told me, he said, uh, we're going to start meeting twice a month. So, Lord willing, next Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, if anybody wants to go, we'll have the church van. Well, I've got something to do. We've all got stuff to do. Everybody in here's got stuff to do. Everybody does. But our country's in a mess. Our nation's in a mess. And, and we may look back six months down the road and wish. Now, Yesterday, the preacher gave his heart, and pastors introduced who they was, but none of that's going to happen no more. We're just going to show up. There's th that's a 13-acre park up there, and we're just going to show up, and we're going to get out of our vehicles, and we're going to go pray. And when we get done praying, we're going to come back and get our vehicles and go home. We'll go wherever we go. So women and men, anybody that would like to go and pray for our country. Where's that at? Uh, you know where Kroger's is in Abingdon. If you look right across the street there, oh, that okay, big field, yeah, know, yeah. the old swimming pool. I know where, you're talking where the old swimming pool is in Abingdon, right up there on the hill, like you're going up to Kmart. The old Kmart there, you turn right, and uh, our nation's in trouble. And uh, 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 our president's in trouble. Yeah. And uh, we need to pray. We need to pray. So as a brother said yesterday, he said it ain't no doctrinal. <laughs> and it wasn't. And it wasn't. It ain't none of that. It's just folks meeting together and praying. And one of the biggest churches up there in Abdon, he said he was going to go and try to get all of his people come. When you come, you don't judge nobody. If they're in a pair of shorts, you don't judge nobody. We're going to pray. You don't judge a man if he's once in grace. You don't judge a man if he looks like a priest. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. So in next Sunday or Saturday morning at 730, we're, it's, it's just one hour. We'll just go there and we pray just... One hour, we'll be praying for one hour. If anybody would like to go with us and pray for our country and our nation, amen, and let's pray for the churches. Uh, we'll be leaving here, and then after that, it'll be two weeks from there. It'll be on a Monday. They're going to have it on a Saturday and a Monday, and it'll be on a Monday at 6 o'clock in the evening. So two, two days out of a month, we're all going to congregate together, and all them preachers, and there'll be more preachers that'll be there next time. Uh, now that the word of mouth has got out. So anybody like to go with us, you're welcome to go up there. I showed up yesterday. I was out mowing right till time in my work clothes. You're not showing to be pretty. You're showing to pray. You're showing up to pray and to seek and seek the face of God. So I thought that was a great thing. I'd never in my life be associated uh, with any of those men except it was for something like this. And I thank God that God's allowed me to be a part of it. And I'd like for Antioch to be a part of it as well. So anybody like to go and be there? Does anybody not know where the baptism place is? Raise your hand. All right. Amen. We got a bunch of old veterans in here. Let's just out now all go right down to the baptismal hall, Sister Kathy. don't matter when you're in trouble, does it, sis? Let me finish that story. Brother Paul got a letter from some wet lady way down in Tennessee and said that they, Brother Ed Davis and Lion Smith was giving it out on the radio to pray for, for Brian. And he said that woman got that letter and said God spoke to her to tell her to go pray. And he said that she said she went and prayed. And she said, I heard from heaven. And said, I seen you, boy. He's going to come out of that. He's going to have. He's going to be married, and he's going to have a son, and he's going to go back to work. And Paul held that letter. He said, when them doctors would come in there and want to donate them, take them organs out. He said, I just get that letter out and I'd rub it. Well, after all that came to pass, Brother Paul said, I looked that woman up. He said, I had to go find her. He'd never met her in his life. He said, I had to go find her. He I was back before they had computers and Google and all that stuff. 
He said it was a hard time finding her. He said, I finally located her way down in Tennessee. He said, I went and knocked on the door. He said, nobody came. He said, I knocked again. And he said, here come an old mother. Now listen to this. He said, here come an old mother. When she opened the door, she had her Bible in her hands like this. <laughs> you can't beat the praying people. You can't beat the praying people. She must have known something that them doctors didn't know. Amen. Note somebody. Note somebody. I asked Brother Junior, I heard the request, we was listening to the service Wednesday or sometime, about Stella not being good, and I told my wife we ought to go down there and have service. He's going to talk to uh, Sister Stella about us having a cottage prayer meeting down at her home. She ain't able to get out and go much now, and we want to try to cheer her up and be a blessing to her. Brother Junior will let us know when will be a good time to do that. And uh, so he'll talk to her today. Just like we used to do that someday, we just take the chairs out and just have a cottage prayer meeting out in the yard, and uh, and Brandon preach, I can preach, Jacob preach, Timothy preach. Uh, seeing Jacob up here makes me want to start a revival. It does. It's in my blood. It, it just makes me want to start a meeting. Amen. So you be much in prayer. We just we may just have a meeting here for long. Who knows what the Lord will do? Who knows what the Lord will do? All right. Abram, you're a How old are you, Abram? How old is he at, Mom? <laughs> you don't have to answer. I know the answer to all that. <laughs> I know the answer to all that. Abram turned 16. Oh, Lord. Got your driver's license. Learners. Learners. <laughs> pray, pray, pray. Anybody else get, had a birthday? Pam! How old are you, Pam? 30 years old. Praise the Lord. I was talking about Pam the other day. How many of y'all remember when Pam used to get on the radio and quote the Bible? Y'all remember that? She quoted Isaiah 53, John chapter 1. What else, Pam? Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, the whole chapter on WZAP. Amen. That, that, that's, that's, that's wonderful. I, probably, probably when you read that down in your Bible, I'd say a lot of it comes back to you, don't Amen. You want to do it for us right now? I didn't think you did. <laughs> well, well, since it's your birthday, we'll let you slide. Roy had a birthday. How old are you, Roy? 38, 38 years old. All right, Brother Tommy. 62. Well, this is a happening month, wasn't it? Anybody else had a birthday? All right, let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Now, when we get down to the river, if anybody, but brother, uh, Sister Chelsea said that she'd like to have Clyde to help me baptize Grayson today. If you got anybody you got confidence in and you want them, why, well, just bring them right on. Amen. That's just good with me. Amen. I'll rejoice if my hand was on your head or not. That don't make a lick of difference to me. Let's just go down there and have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And enjoy what God's given us this day. All right. Good day. God bless you. Sit to real. Good job, preacher man. <laughs>